Okay, Jane says, why do I get different results on my cone pack based on which shelf, top, middle, or bottom the pack is located? Yeah, that's because our kilns tend to fire very um, unevenly and I've had the same experience. Um, my new kiln that I just bought has much thicker bricks than the kiln that I had been firing for 10 years. So um, I had an old manual scut kiln kiln sitter kiln um and the bricks were all crumbling on the bottom and the elements were kind of spilling out of the grooves like the grooves were all broken this was um a free kiln that i got when i graduated from clay school and so um i made it work for me but it did fire very very unevenly so my bottom shelf was always cooler than the rest of the kiln um and so one answer is that that's just the way it is sometimes is that kilns fire unevenly i recommend so i'm glad that you are putting cone packs on all of your shelves um if you do that over two or three firings you'll see if it's always the bottom shelf because sometimes it'll be the top shelf that's cooler than the rest and sometimes the middle shelf like the top and bottom are hottest and the middle shelf is cooler there's no like bottom is always colder because heat rises. That's not really how it works. Um, the way you load your kiln can have an effect on how, like how much energy it takes to heat each shelf. So a shelf that's very densely packed, say you have um, lots of really small objects and a short post and you have, don't have much air space, um, that can be, that, that shelf probably takes more energy to heat up than a shelf that has lots of air because air heats up easily. It's the, it's the clay that um, takes longer to heat up. And so a shelf that is densely packed is going to take more energy to heat up than a shelf that is um, more sparsely packed with lots more air or um, like a large bowl where there's all this empty space in the middle that is going to take less energy to heat up than, you know, like a shelf with a hundred cylinders on it. So when we have a programmable kiln with multiple thermocouples, the thermocouples read the temperature at each level. And so they turn the elements on and off and try to regulate the temperature. So the thermocouples help to even out the temperature in the kiln where it's like, okay, the top is heating up faster. I'm going to turn those elements off, let the bottom element, you know, the heat in the bottom catch up in, until everything is at the same temperature and then on from there. And so that's what the clicking you hear, the relays are turning the elements on and off. And that is to regulate the temperature. When we have a manual kiln where we're just turning switches onto low, medium, high, um, then that's usually where we start to get really un you know, we can get uneven heat work on from shelf to shelf, depending on how the, each shelf is packed. It'll depend on how many elements are exposed to that level of the kiln. So if you have, I always recommend leaving a good, if your kiln is firing really unevenly, leave a good inch of space between the top of your pots and the shelf above it, um, just so that there's, it's not so dense so there is a bit of air space in there and try to load your kiln i mean it's hard if you're if you make some large bowls and small little cups or you know we have to just use the kiln space as efficiently as we can but we also have to keep in mind that the way we load our kiln can affect the heat work from shelf to shelf and um so sometimes it just knowing which shelf is going to be hotter or cooler can just help you pack your kiln accordingly so with my old manual kiln that was really uneven i you know i used to put i used to use a four inch post always on the bottom because that allowed me to have cone packs that i could see because i had four peeps and i would want to see the cones on each shelf and um and so um, but I learned to put a taller post on the bottom, even if my pots are shorter, because that just helped. Um, it exposed one more element 
to that lower shelf and just help to kind of um, allow a little more heat down there. And so that's how I kind of dealt with that. I wasn't able to control it um, to my liking, which is why I ended up spending several thousand dollars on a new kiln with a dig you know with thermocouples um but that was a long time you know i fired that kiln for many many years before i was like okay um i'm ready for an upgrade and so we just have to make do with what we have but the more you can get to know how your kiln fires then you can kind of load your kiln strategically um and just put the glazes if it's always cooler on the bottom put the glazes that um are okay being cooler on the bottom and then the you know sometimes I had runny glazes that would run if they got too hot I could put those on the bottom um, or my clear glaze that didn't care what shelf it was on put that on the bottom and then the glazes that really needed the heat in order to look the way I wanted them to I would put those in the middle or at the top where I knew it was gonna you know reach a hot cone six which is what I was aiming for <clears throat> 